Are you still having pain after knee surgery? At the end of this video, you're going to learn two exercises that may help you out to solve this problem. Very simple things that you can do at home without any special equipment, anything like that. So stay tuned. Let me explain who this applies to. First of all, my name is Tom Wellman. I'm from Apex Orthopedic Rehabilitation in Paramus, New Jersey. We love helping people move and feel better with simple solutions based on good movements and healthy exercise. So what happens sometimes after knee surgery, occasionally, um, and this has happened a little bit since uh, the virus issue, is that people have, have not been able to complete their physical therapy. And one thing that happens after knee surgery that's a big, big problem is that they don't regain full extension. So what does full extension mean? That means, and this is our knee model here, if this is zero degrees, this is a straight knee, most of us have a little what they call hyperextension, okay, at the knee. Most of it's called, you know, about seven degrees of hyperextension. And that can be a big problem if you don't regain that um, immediately after surgery. Now, on a skeleton, that's what we just talked about, hyperextension. Or, you know, so what does that look like on someone's knee? Okay, so lying right here on the inside of my knee, this is con zero degrees. So if, if I would try this on a floor. And let's see if you can tighten your thigh and basically get the back of your knee touching the table. Okay, if it's not touching the table, bad things happen, especially if it's very close to your opposite knee. So I always want you to compare left to right when you do this. Okay, so we want to see um, this is full or zero extension. And what we talked about earlier is most people have plus seven degrees or they have additional what you call hyperextension. So if you look over here underneath my ankle here, this is coming up to about plus five, plus seven. I didn't measure it, but you can see how you have this little area underneath my ankle. That's hyperextension at the knee. Now let's take a look at my other side. Okay, I've had injuries on the left, so maybe it's a little tighter. I don't know. I don't think it is. Same thing on this side. Look, I've got a little bit of hyperextension. Wow, good. We're pretty close. Um, but even like a, a little bit off can make a big deal for how the knee functions. So we really want to have that hyperextension. Another trick too is if you have a, your spouse or your or someone that help you. You can hold down your leg here, just say the back of your knee hits there, and just have them lift up on your ankle, not on your foot, but on your ankle. Let's see what kind of hyperextension you have. So that's another way to have someone else kind of check that uh, motion out and help you out. Okay, so the knee has a kind of a unique moving pattern. It's, it's not a simple hinge where you're just, you're moving just in this direction here, okay? So when your knee straightens or bends, it basically does a little bit of a roll and then it does a little bit of a slide on top of the lower bone here called the tibia. So this is the femur, this is the tibia, and this is the small one is a fibula. Um, so what happens is as, this, as it's bending, it's rolling and it's sliding a little bit. And believe it or not, there's a little rotation that occurs at the knee. So when you have any little lost in motion, all those little movements really get thrown off. And I like to think about it as almost like a dresser draw I use this analogy a lot in here for different problems, but a dresser draw where it's kind of binding a little bit, and that binding of the joint is kind of getting stuck. Um, can create pain, it'll affect the way the, the knee moves. Sometimes you even feel weakness from this um, that just can't quite um, you know, be alleviated by simply strengthening it. So range of motion is really critical, especially hyperextension. My second most favorite exercise to work on knee extension is basically your leg can get propped up. I don't want to like it at the heel, but let's try underneath the ankle here. And you want to make sure the calf, I'm actually a little bit, um, I should be a little higher here, so let's move this up a little higher. A little higher so the calf, the back of the knee, are not contacting the table. Okay. And you want to prop it up like that. So there should be a little space here. There's a slight space here. And a little bit behind the knee. You want to be able to relax. Okay, now I'm pretty relaxed there. So you can just sit there for five or ten minutes and just let the weight of the leg hang and the way the leg will create that extension. Okay, now oftentimes you really need some more weight to really make a difference. And you'll have this, I would start out with five or 10 minutes, two or three times a day you can try it, see how you feel, see what your tolerance is. It shouldn't really make it feel dramatically worse, a little sore maybe because you haven't done this or you, you, know, you haven't gotten to it. Um, what you can take is a simple ankle weight. We'll take an ankle weight, this is a two pound ankle weight. You can place it, uh, I like to be just a little bit above the kneecap here and you just let it sit down. You don't want the, the, the weight to be resting on the table. You want it just on there, so you may have to double it up. 
and if you have like an old ace bandage, you can wrap it. I just let it sit there, okay? It's a very dramatic stretch. Um, you may need more weight to create the stretch because you know um, you just may need more force depending on the person. But um, you can just, I like to start out slow. <laughs> Let's go, like one or two mounds first, see if we tolerate it, and then we can add weight. So first body weight, maybe one or two pounds, three, four pounds, up to five pounds. Five or 10 minutes, maybe two or three times a day. Start out with that and see if that improves the range of motion. And you know how we assessed it on the front and we showed you how to assess it. Let's get it to you can actually be reasonably equal to the other side. Okay, so that's my second. The, the next one, which is my number one, is basically standing, let's say against a, a kitchen counter or a wall. Um, I want, let's say this is the left side that we're stretching. I want to move your foot out about a, of the length of your opposite foot and the other one can come out as well. You're gonna lean against the wall or wherever you're against. You can also do this in standing without the wall. The wall just kind of prevents you from moving your hips when we're trying to move the knee, okay? So let's start with a little bit of a, a bend at your knee. Don't worry about the right one. We're only concerned about this one. You wanna be above your kneecap, this right here, the patella or kneecap, and you wanna put your hands kind of like a web space here, and you wanna push straight back, okay? So you're gonna push pressure on, pressure off. So pressure on, pressure off and you can see it kind of goes into that hyperextended position and initially a lot of people feel pain as they do it as long as when they stop it's not worse from doing it so you want to do this movement 10 to 20 times do a set of 10 see how it feels walk around a little bit and then apply pressure again pressure on pressure off okay you can do this 10 times 10 to 20 times every two or three hours okay as long as it doesn't make it worse. This is not a no pain, no gain exercise. If you're feeling worse afterwards, or you can't walk for, I don't mean just the moment, the immediate moments after you get done, but if you notice like that day that it get, it's getting worse and worse, it's either not the right exercise for you, or you're doing it incorrectly, okay? So just to go over again, it's pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. Nice thing to assess whether it's good for you to do this particular exercise, because just because you have tightness doesn't mean this is the solution, is do an activity that you have, have a hard time with. A lot of times we'll have people do a, a squat here or get out of a chair or go up and down the steps, and we'll say, tell me how it feels. And they'll say, wow, it hurts like heck, like I have to hold on the handrail, I have trouble lowering myself. Okay, how does it feel after doing the exercise? I call it a functional assessment. You try and see that before and after. If you're feeling a little bit better, like it goes from, let's say, an eight level pain to a five, that's a sign of progress. Oh, I feel a little steadier, I feel a little stronger. Pain's not gone, but I definitely feel better. We're on the right track. So listen, if this uh, helped you out, you have any questions, put it in the comments. Um, subscribe to our channel, it's below here. We talk about knee issues, we talk about a lot of spine issues, hip, whatever, various topics of movements that can help you move and feel better, okay? And like it if you like it. Have a great day.